Hey everyone, my name is Lance, and this is Amped About Aimpad. It's been about a month since my last uh, update, and it's been a busy month. Uh, about a month ago, I was over at uh, the CES show in Las Vegas and uh, kind of demonstrated the technology to several different companies to see if they would be interested in adding it to their uh, lineup of keyboards. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But in the meantime, I've been uh, rehauling the firmware and made some significant changes to how things kind of work together. And there's also some pretty exciting things I want to show you. So let's jump right into it. All right. So the first thing that I wanted to kind of show you is a complete rehaul of the code. Previously, things were hard-coded so that, for example, WASD were hard-coded to the left analog stick. And uh, in order to ch change that in the code, there were several places that it needed to be changed. Um, and it was uh, not a very simple or easy way to, to do that from a coding perspective. So I re overhauled the entire code, put things together for it's a lot more logical and, and things like that. But in the process, uh, the whole reason why I did that was I wanted to make it possible to easily assign any analog access to any analog key. Um, so now that is possible. It's possible to make any of these keys anything that you want to be from an Xbox 360 perspective um, very easily. And the other benefit of that is that now, since it's kind of been abstracted, I can assign multiple accesses to the same key. So I could have W be assigned to the left analog stick and the right analog stick if I wanted to. Um, but I could also make multiple keys have the same control over the same analog access. So for example, with the default profile that the, the keyboard starts in now, um, WASD is just the normal Xbox 360 controller uh, left analog stick. Q and E can control the uh, left and right trigger. But also, over on the arrow keys, the left and right arrow keys control the left stick as well. So same thing, A is the same thing, and arrow is the same thing. And uh, up is the right trigger, and down is the left trigger. The whole reason why I did this was I wanted to make it an easy way out of the box when you plug it in even easier, that if you want to be on foot and use your mouse to be aiming, uh, you can move yourself in analog movement on foot over here, and if you jump into a vehicle without having to switch to other modes or do anything like that, you can jump over to your uh, keyboard keys on the arrow keys and drive um, intuitively. So you don't have to mess around with anything. If you stay in this mode, it gives you a nice hybrid configuration of both foot and vehicles um, pretty simply without having to mess around. Um, but if you do want to have some better control, let's say in the F2 mode, the traditional driving mode that we've con configured, we've made it possible. So now that uh, Q and E are assigned to the right analog stick, and you still have WASD as the driving functions to use the right trigger to accelerate and left trigger to go backwards and still steer left and right. But if you wanted to peek uh, to the left and to the right using Q and E allows you to kind of shift your view on those games that allow you to move your head to the right to see if someone's trying to pass you or, or things like that. Um, but also at the same time, let's say if you wanted to split this control so that say you're more comfortable steering left and right with A and D, but you want to control acceleration with the arrow keys, you can do that now because you can assign multiple accesses or the same access to multiple keys. Um, so it allows you a nice hybrid configuration. The, the way that this works from a coding perspective is if the D is pushed down further than the arrow key, then the D wins, but if the arrow key goes down further, then it wins. So whichever has the strongest signal is the one that uh, allows the, what's ever passed to the, the game. So um, the other nice thing that we've been able to do is since now that we've kind of abstracted that entire piece of information, now we can choose whether or not an analog access or an analog key is actually even active at all. So if I go back to this F1 mode, let's say I'm playing a game and I have this set up with WASD here, but I also, for whatever reason, have R and F assigned to this right analog stick. Let's say, well, R is traditionally in a first-person shooter used for reloading. So uh, what, what I've done is basically made it so it's possible for you to turn off a key on the fly in the hardware by pressing FN and then the key that you want to enable or disable. So if you push R and it just flashes red saying you disabled that key, now when I push it, nothing happens. It's just the normal R key for the keyboard. Um, to allow you to reload. But if you're not going to use that R key for the reload and you want to enable it for some type of analog movement 
function control, you just hold down the FN key again, push R, they turn green, say it's enabled, and now the R key is active. And that's the same thing for all analog keys. If I want to turn off WASD, I can on the fly. These are now disabled. Um, actually, S wasn't disabled. Let me try that again. There you go. WASD. Uh, if I want to disable QNE and whatever on the fly, you can turn them off. So um, that's a, a nice, nice little feature. So really what I tried to do is make it as customizable and as intuitive to configure as possible uh, in a hardware. But something interesting happened uh, a couple of weeks ago. There was a change in the Steam platform from Valve and it added support for our keyboard, uh, allowing you to configure per game how different settings might apply to different games without having to mess around with the hardware and things like that to when you're swapping in between different games you can set up specific profiles for specific games and those settings will load automatically for you when you load those games so i wanted to show you that next because i think it's extremely helpful all right so here we have the game called rage it's from the developers id i'm sure you've probably heard of it um and it has really good analog movement. You can see I can move extremely slow if I really want to. And uh, without having to you know, go into too much detail, I have a lot of range of analog movement control and full directional control as well. You can see with the Xbox controller in the bottom right corner what's happening. Um, but what is really kind of interesting here is if I go to the Steam overlay, now under control configuration, uh, it's possible to set up profiles specifically for any controller, and so since the aimpad R5 keyboard is seen as a controller by the system, I'm able to set up this profile specifically for the Rage game. So if I go to the left analog stick, you'll see that there's this giant uh, circle. The circle represents an anti-dead zone, so any movement automatically pushes it out to this circle. And you can see if I go to additional settings, the anti-dead zone is somewhere around 42% is where I found to kind of be the sweet point of the ability to have that nice smooth movement. Uh, otherwise, I would have to push the key in a significant amount in order for it to start moving. But right now, I can just barely push that key in and he'll start moving just slightly in that direction. And the more I push it down, the more faster he will move. So, very, very cool. Uh, that there's that ability but what I wanted to show you is if I were to close out of this game without having to make any changes in the hardware um, it's all configured in this software front end from uh, Steam basically if I go into another game and start it up I don't have to mess around with the keyboard anymore um, I basically can set up profiles specifically for specific games and the the Steam front end will essentially take care of all that configuration for me. There's nothing else that I need to do on, on the device. So if I start this game up and uh, kind of show you what's going on here, there is some pretty cool things. Uh, there's a little cutscene here, but this game is really kind of a, a strange, funky game. Uh, it has a lot of uh, weird uh, gameplay elements that are a lot of fun, but uh, for, for example, if I kind of draw through these blocks, you can cut things out in different angles, however you want. It's very physics-based, it's very cool. But I have nice analog movement here in slow speed and medium speed and running speed, uh, all set up specifically for this game. If I go into the Steam overlay and look at my controller configurations again, you'll notice that this anti-dead zone is significantly smaller than it was in the Rage one that was kind of this giant one. If I go to the additional settings, the anti-dead zone here is set to about 15-16% or so. Um, and that's where I kind of found the sweet spot for this particular game. So the nice thing is, is that this profile that I set up, I can share it with anyone else that has an aimpad R5 keyboard, and they can import it into their Steam settings. And anytime they load this game, the profile that I set up will automatically be used for them. Um, and simply because there's so much overlap with the Xbox controller and the Steam controller, all the Steam controller profiles that use the analog left stick also apply. Um, so you can import pretty much anything that the Steam controller has already been developed. So 
What, long story short, what that means is that Valve has essentially programmed the front end for the Aimpad R5 keyboard, and I would like to thank them very much for doing so, because it's a wonderful feature and it saves me a tremendous amount of work. So thank you, Valve. As always, you are awesome. All right, so there you go. The newest update to the firmware of the Aimpad R5 keyboard allows you to configure any key to be any analog access, as well as to enable and disable any analog key if you sh choose to do so. Uh, that allows significant amount of configuration to be done at the hardware level, but if it's still not enough, then there's now a software layer using Steam to allow you to configure the keyboard per game uh, exactly how you want to use it. Uh, a few people have been asking me, when is this going to come to market? When can I buy it? When can I do what you're doing? Um, the, we are still deciding on who the best partner is to bring this to market. And uh, once we have that negotiated and taken care of, it will be coming shortly thereafter. So I'm hoping we have something for you very, very soon that we can share. Um, but it's still going to take a little bit more time to uh, solidify that plan. But I'm feeling pretty confident that uh, we will be able to, to do something very, very shortly. So, uh, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Otherwise, thank you for watching.